Who is the most mysterious man to have ever lived? The Somerton Man? In 1948, some Australians noticed a man lying on the beach. Assuming he was drunk, they joked that he must be dead and moved on. The next morning he was still there. They called the police. The police found a clean, well-dressed body of a man in his 40s, in excellent physical condition, with no signs of struggle or convulsions, or even sand in his clothes. All the tags were removed from his clothes, and he had no wallet. No missing person could be linked to the Somerton man and he couldn't have been a drifter who had heart failure. Autopsy determined that, well, it wasn't any of the usual diseases that could strike you down in middle age. The man didn't die of a heart attack. He appeared healthy inside and out, except that he had an enlarged spleen, and blood was congealed around his internal organs. The congealed blood made the medical examiner think poison, but no poison could be detected. Still, the examiner said poison was his conclusion, just an undetectable poison. What else could it be, given what the autopsy uncovered? Since the man had been stripped of all identification, police scoured the area and searched for anything on the man's person that could tie him to anything. He had nothing more noteworthy in his pockets than chewing gum, until another look revealed a hidden pocket in his waistband. Inside that pocket was a scrap of paper that read, Tamam Shud. Tamam Shud is Persian for it is finished. The police set to tracking down the book that phrase was torn from, and getting a suitcase left at a station that they eventually connected to the man. Same unusual thread as was used to mend his trousers, I wonder if he was unwed and so mended them himself. The suitcase was a disappointment. The tags had been removed from everything in the suitcase except two articles of clothing, one labeled a T, Keen, and the other, Keen. The police and detectives from 1948 to this day haven't been able to find a T, Keen, G who could have been the Somerton man. He had stationery in his suitcase, but no letters. A lead finally opened, someone came forward with the book from which the mysterious phrase, Tamam should, had been torn, a copy of the 11th century poem Rubaiyat in a rare edition. The man who turned it into the police said it had been left in his unlocked car. In the Rubaiyat was several lines of what looked like a code, and an unlisted phone number. The police found a woman who owned the phone number. Jessica Thompson, nicknamed Jetson, was questioned about the case involving her hashtag. She was evasive. When shown a plaster bust of the Somerton man, she looked extremely distraught like she was about to faint, but then she claimed she didn't know him. She, too, was involved with the Rubaiyat. She'd given a copy to a male companion who had been in World War II in an intelligence unit, Alf Boxall. And Jetson herself may have been involved in intelligence, her daughter said she spoke Russian but refused to say how she learned it. She worked with refugees, and was interested in communism. Her daughter suspected she was a spy, and she was afraid her mother was involved in the mystery man's death. Jetson's daughter, in fact, claimed her mother admitted that she knew the man, and claimed that her mother said she thought the case was above state police level. The Somerton man died wearing an American-tailored suit, uncircumcised, with a pasty in his stomach. Such things become relevant when nothing relevant can be found. Curiously, he had soft, smooth hands but strong muscles and high, unusually powerful calves. What did he do to get a body like that? Jessica Thompson, aka Jetson, had a son named Robin. He and the Somerton man both lacked front incisors and had the same rare ear structure. The odds of that being a coincidence are estimated at 1 in 10 million to 20 million, a man named Derek Abbott became fascinated with the case and has researched it for years. He met with Robin Thompson's daughter, and in a happy twist, they married and have three children. He thinks the man should be exhumed for DNA testing to determine if Abbott's wife and children are his descendants. The government rejected his requests for exhumation, and he has been reduced to trying to have DNA testing done to old hairs. At least the hair tells him the man's mother was of European heritage some possible explanations for the Somerton man. He had a child by the randomly shady, Jessica Thompson slash Jetson, who cut him off when he tried to create a family with them and he killed himself by some strange poison, carrying a note from a favorite poem. He just happened to lack ID and hated having tags in his clothes. Nobody missed him. He was a spy for the US slash allies, and Jetson was a spy for the Soviets. The Rubaiyat was used as a codebook. Jetson or one of her compatriots poisoned him.
The Australian government would not let the truth out because it would damage intelligence. He was a communist spy. Of course the Australian intelligence authorities wouldn't admit they'd poisoned him. The cops weren't in on the secret and they couldn't access public records from behind the Iron Curtain, so they could find no trace of his birth or anything. Also, he had a love affair with another communist spy and they had a child. He was a US slash allies spy who tried to get close to Jetson because he knew or wanted to prove that she was a traitor and spy. He perhaps got too close and fathered a child by her. She or one of her compatriots found out he was spying on them and had him poisoned. She was horrified, of course, but couldn't exactly admit to the cops what was happening. None of those theories account for why anyone ditched Rebeit Sands Tamam should, in a stranger's car, why the man had no socks in his suitcase, I didn't mention that before, or why Jetson admitted she gave Alf Boxall a copy of the Rebeit. I hope one day Derek Abbott gets his way and the Somerton man is united with his family, at least in death, and his killers are exposed, though it is probably too late to bring them to justice. Not to be mourned and known is not a humane fate. Update June 2021, the Somerton man has been disinterred for DNA testing. They are trying to identify him by testing his DNA and uploading it into genealogy databases. If they find his cousins on a genealogy database, they can look through public records for a relative of those cousins who went missing around the time the Somerton man died. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you have something to say, please leave a comment.